Vanguard's been revealed. We've put up some gameplay and footage and some stuff to know about already. But today, I want to take a little bit of time and talk to you guys about Create a Class and what you can expect to see here through the beta and the full game later this year. There's a couple of things that are actually some really big changes here that we'll talk about in terms of things like new things like proficiencies and kits, explaining all of that while breaking down your kill streaks, field upgrades, and things like 10 attachments in custom classes. So as we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. Are you guys looking forward to jumping into the beta here? this weekend or the following? Is there anything in particular that you find really interesting? Whatever the case may be, let me know your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We're gonna have so much stuff you don't want to miss here coming over the course of the next couple of days. So much stuff to talk about in detail regarding Call of Duty Vanguard. So if you're new, make sure you don't miss a single bit. That said, let's jump right into it because there is a lot to talk about. So with so much to discuss here in regards to create a class, what's on offer? Going to be real with you, this is very similar to Modern Warfare 2019 for the sole reason of making the Warzone integration easy. So a lot of this is going to seem very familiar, and in a lot of ways, it's kind of a combination of Modern Warfare 2019 and Black Ops Cold War's create a class options. But off the bat, you end up seeing you have the ability to edit where your loadouts are. That's your classes, of course. You have kill streaks and you have field upgrades. Loadouts, that's simple and self-explanatory. We'll get to those more in a second and break down all the individual items here with that. But from a top-down level, kill streaks that are in the game right now, we have Intel at three kills, which is essentially your personal radar. The care package at four kills, which give you a random kill streak. The spy plane at four kills, which reveals enemies on the radar for your entire team, not just you. The counter spy plane at four to counter what we just mentioned. The glide bomb at five kills. This, of course, blowing your enemies to smithereens. The death machine at five kills, which is what you'd think. But the interesting part, here at this is that it persists through death until the ammo is entirely out. So that's unlike things like your War Machine and Black Ops Cold War, where if you fire off X amount of rockets or you get one kill with one rocket, even if you only used one rocket and die, that's gone at the beginning of your next life. We also have the Mortar Barrage, which was locked at level 29 for five kills. The War Machine at seven kills, again, locked behind rank 25. The Flame Knot at nine kills, which is your Juggernaut with a flamethrower, and the Attack Dogs at 10 kills. But that's what we have right now, though. If you zoom in on the dialog box explaining the kill streaks, we can see the full list of streaks potentially coming for launch here. Assuming some of these are placeholders because we do see two glide bomb icons and the death machine is in the three kills tier, but we see things like a dog icon, maybe a personal guard dog, three care packages, likely an emergency airdrop, a large bomber reminiscent of the carpet bomber from Call of Duty World War II, a trio of planes, and I'm really hoping that's not an air support streak that just negates your air streaks, but there's also what looks to be the ball turret gunner, that's your chopper gunner, and also what's a large radar antenna, maybe something like an advanced UAV. Interesting to see all that, but that's the kill streaks that we know of right now. Full disclosure, I did not see lappable streaks here in my playtime, but that's also because I was too busy getting stomped by Simp and other CDL pros, so that may not be my best area of expertise. Now, jumping over to the field upgrade section here at this, these, of course, are making a return, probably to the surprise of, well, nobody. But what we have this year is the supply box at a recharge rate of fast that will replenish ammo for you and your teammates around you. Armor plates unlocked at level 27, which gives you that plate of armor, like in Champion Hill, with a recharge rate of described as fast. The Goliath, which is a remote-controlled bomb on tracks that you can control for 30 seconds before it self-destructs, but you can destroy it earlier, so kind of like an RCXD. Though, this thing can actually run you over currently, basically just nibbling at your ankles and can kill you. Not sure if that's intended or not, but I saw this little dude mowing people down in our early play session. The field mic that then reveals nearby enemies is also available here. This has a recharge rate of medium and seems to pulse it a bit slower of a rate by comparison to Black Ops Cold War. And finally, the one that I'm sure that everyone is excited for, full sarcasm there if you didn't catch that, is Dead Silence. Unlocked at level 21 and with a fast recharge time, this makes your footsteps silent. Now, I really wish this one would have been a perk and maybe we get lucky, maybe they change it, but I honestly don't see that happening. The only thing that I can maybe think is a positive about this particular adjustment is that it seems like footsteps are relatively quiet as is in this game, but realistically, maybe I just don't have my audio mix set up properly, but I'm just bummed to see that Dead Silence is returning as a field upgrade. Either way, that's your final field upgrade that we know of currently, but just like the kill streaks, though, the initial dialog box shows off a bit more of the field upgrade list, potentially a full one coming for launch. There we see what looks kind of like a tack insert. At first, there was one that I thought was stim, but that doesn't make sense given that stim is a tactical we'll see and talk about in a second. And then we also see two map looking ones, one maybe a crate for a weapon and possibly a placeholder image perhaps. But let's talk about gunsmith, weapon customization 
organization, class building, and everything like that. Firstly, Gunsmith does return here, so a lot of this, what you see, may be familiar. But what's really cool, I think, is the depth of customization you can have this year in particular. Up to 10 attachments is a whole lot of unique weapon builds coming up. Also, with the ability to make your own Gunsmith customizations, the Armory does return, as well allowing you to save your custom mods for quick equip as well. But 10 attachments. For these, we end up seeing the attachment categories of muzzles, barrels, optics, stocks, proficiencies, which are basically your weapon perks, a kit, a rear grip, a magazine, ammo type, which is modification for your ammo, kind of perks for the ammo in a sense, and an underbarrel. So a bit of an explainer more here to break down this in more depth. Things like your muzzle, barrel, optic, stock, rear grips, underbarrels, and things like that. Those are things you probably recognize and are familiar with from either Modern Warfare and Warzone or even so much to Black Ops Cold War. But where things start to differ a little bit here with this is with the things like the proficiencies. These are your weapon perks again, but interestingly, as we'll get to in a second, you also have ammo types, which is kind of like two perks essentially by comparison, one for the weapon and one for your sort of bullets. Kits seem to be the more relatable modern warfare weapon perks, but more so relating to your entire class. And these kind of vary depending on weapon classification and specific weapons. So not every weapon will have these same kit options. For example, on the STG 44, that included the fast melee, reach, which increases your melee distance, surplus, which grants more XP per kill, deep breath for longer breath holding instead of your long range shots, fully loaded for full ammo at the start of a life, defender for improved mount movement and use times, heavy hitter to produce greater stuns on targets with melees, and on hand for less downtime after using equipment. But for, say, the pistols you have with the machine pistol, tight grip for increased accuracy while continuously firing, steady for reduction in movement penalty for firing and being suppressed, disable to increase suppression generated by each shot, panic to improve accuracy for several seconds after swapping weapons, gung-ho to fire while sprinting, and akimbo for the ability to dual weapons. But then you also have things like the rat pistol, which is the same classification but a different weapon that has sleight of hand for faster reloading, acrobatic for reduced aim penalty when entering or exiting prone, steady for again that reduction in movement penalty for firing and being suppressed, same thing with panic to improve accuracy for several seconds after swapping weapons, but also then perfectionist for recoil reduction but increased flinch, and also unmarked for kills against enemies who do not retaliate, being able to grant you dead silence for a short period of time. So seemingly a little bit more in terms of traditional perks for weapons, but not always guaranteed to be the same ones. Rear grips, even though we do know a lot of what they do here at this, in Gunsmith in Vanguard, there are a lot of grips. There are rubber, taped, leather, fabric, grooved, hatched, bakelite, pine tar, granular, and stippled grips, all each offering things like ADS improvements, sprint to fire improvements, and even new things like recoil recovery, initial accuracy and recoil bonuses, so on your first couple of shots, and some other interesting attributes. The magazines here, this is where we start to get into the sort of modification here, but on the magazine side, you may be a little bit more familiar with this. For me, the weapon that I progressed the furthest was the STG-44, and for that, we ended up seeing that there was a 7.62 Tokarev 30 round mag, which gave you a lot more control and accuracy as well as mobility, but you sacrificed damage. There's a Russian short 30 mag here, which increased your bullet damage because you increased the caliber of the round. There's an 8 millimeter Kurs 45 round drum, which just gives you more ammo capacity. And there's also that 30 Russian short 30 mag, which gives you a bit more damage, penetration, and reload quickness for the sacrifice of quite a bit of control and ADS speeds. So this kind of being like how we saw with, say, the AUG for Modern Warfare, how there are multiple conversion kits in terms of the ammo modifications, but that's not the only things you can do to your ammo here by default within create a class. That actually then comes then to the ammo type and modification. And bear in mind, you can take both of these for no penalty to your create a class. You don't have to sacrifice something so you can end up getting this. But these ammo types and modifications, again, are kind of like your perks for your ammo. On the STG alone, we had the subsonic rounds, which give off no mini map ping and no enemy skulls to conceal their death to their team. You also had FMJ rounds, which of course increase bullet penetration. There was frangible, which increased the flinch dealt to enemies, delays their healing, and if you hit their legs, it slows them down physically. So legitimately like the weapon perk from Modern Warfare of frangible disabling and frangible wounding, all in one. There are armor piercing or AP rounds, which do more damage to vehicles and streaks, incendiary rounds, which do incendiary damage and can kill over time because you're burning an enemy that's hit with this, lightened, which simply increases bullet velocity, and hollow point, which removes the damage penalty when hitting limbs, which is gonna be wild. So as you can tell, taking this and a weapon perk, and maybe even a modification for your magazine, 
it's going to get kind of insane here in terms of what you can do and the lethality of your weapon builds. This also really makes me wonder how Warzone is going to be, given this opens the door for so much. Granted, we did see the Cold War limited the eight attachments that you had with the Gunfighter wildcard down to five with Warzone, but that game wasn't meant to mirror another one to make integration seamless. This one is, so I'm really curious to see if we have all of this then change how Warzone creator classes are built out and what that may mean for the future. But right now, that's the Vanguard side of things here. Anyways, some potentially worrisome yet really in-depth bits out of the way. We also saw the return of detailed statistics, that coming back in your creator class here, which is awesome if you ask me. You don't just have those weapon stats bars that aren't accurate at all. You can actually take a look at the fine details of each weapon and how each attachment adjusts certain attributes of your weapon. Creator class also offers the ability to edit and change items on the fly in-game again here, returning from both Modern Warfare and Black Ops Cold War. That to me is still one of my favorite features I think that looking back at the past two years was insanely innovative here and helpful for Call of Duty players compared to the rest of the franchise and what we had there. In terms of weaponry, again, we already detailed that here today. We put up some gameplay of every single weapon here. If you missed that, check the channel here and check that out in full detail. But to run over it again, we have the assault rifles of the SDG 44, Itra Burst, Bar, N41 and the Volk, the SMGs of the M1928, Sten, and MP40, the shotguns of the revolving shotgun, auto-looting shotgun, and the LMGs of the MG42, DP27, and the Bren, the marksman rifle of the M1 Garand, the sniper rifles of the three-line rifle, and the Car 98K, and then finally your secondaries of the handguns of the machine pistol, the Rat, the 1911, and launchers of the M1 Bazooka and Panzerschreck, and finally the melee of the FS Fighting Knife. Again, all 22 weapons we detailed earlier in the day, so you can jump in in here with that video if you guys want to catch up on that but talking weapon perks here kind of rounding out some of the other stuff of what we see within vanguard's multiplayer in tier one we had on offer ghost fortified low profile and survival training but also thanks to the perks dialogue box as we've seen with the kill streaks the field upgrades and gunsmith we did also see that cold blooded is likely to end up in this category as well it's just not in this current build ghost actually works how it does in cold war which is nice hidden only when moving hopefully this means a change into war zone as well once that integration happens fortified is your perk to reduce damage and health regeneration delay from explosives kind of like your battle hardened here but it also is more effective if you're mounted crouched or prone which is interesting Low profile then in tier one, rounding that out, allows you to avoid detection by the enemy and what they state is, again, immune to the effects of that piercing vision. A bit of a proficiency or attachment that acts as combat scout does in Warzone, highlighting players when damaged. Tier 2 has High Alert, which pulses when an enemy outside of your field of view sees you. Radar, which is another terrible design decision if you ask me, which allows you to see enemy fire on your minimap, which means, yes, that is not a minimap thing by default in Vanguard. I am really not a fan of this decision, but that's something we're going to expand upon shortly. This video solely dedicated to talking about create a class. Forward to Intel allows you to see indicators for enemy reinforcements on your minimap, and it shows you a larger minimap area. And then finally, in Tier 2, Tracker allows you to see enemy footsteps, but this time it also lets you see the enemy death locations and hides enemy death markers of those who you kill, offering a bit more in terms of that bonus for stealth. And finally, in Tier 3, we have Demolition, which will spawn you with another lethal and lethals display, an indicator showing that path of travel. So if you guys want to be a little bit more accurate with your grenade throws, that can help show you exactly where that will go. Double time increases the duration of tack sprint and increases the crouch movement speed by 30%. Tactician restores your tactical equipment every 30 seconds, but not your lethal, interestingly. So not quite your restock from Modern Warfare. And finally, Overkill, which again, does what you'd expect, allows you to carry two primary weapons. Rounding out the creative class with lethals and tacticals, just running down these real quick here. We have the MK2 Frag Grenade, the Gammon Bomb, the Molotov Cocktail, the Demolition Charge, the Thermite and the Throwing Knife, and the tacticals of the M18 Smoke Grenade, the Stun Grenade, the Gas Grenade, the Stim and the S mine 44. So that is your creative class here. Everything that you can create and what has changed within creative class this year, as opposed to others. I'm very interested to see going forward, how those 10 attachment slots will work out and how it affects the multiplayer gameplay on a regular basis. I mean, that is a lot of incredibly powerful things you can have at a certain point when you can take a weapon perk, all these attachments, but also ammo modifications and caliber conversions, things like that, without having to sacrifice anything of your creative class. It's just there naturally. 
So very curious to see how this all plays out. Some big changes made to create a class, but also a lot that still may seem very familiar here with it. So that said, that's where we're going to wrap it up. I would love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of create a class within Vanguard? Are you looking forward to getting your hands onto it? Or are you guys not quite looking forward to it? whatever the case may be? Let me know your thoughts down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing all things Vanguard and anything COD related. We have so much stuff here coming up. You guys do not want to miss. So make sure you stick it here on the channel. If you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with us on YouTube. Practically live on both those. If you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever the case may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.